control here. And I also have a cover to protect it that we put over the control. I'll show you how that works. And do one installed, you see the cover. So it's a mold up in there. You can actually hear the difference when it's feeding the big thing. This is the old control. Look how rusted out it is. And all the water. I'm up here on the roof just to verify. That uh, we don't have a problem. Compressor right here. Check the side glass. It looks clear. Nothing jumping out at me saying there's a problem. So I think we're pretty good. For that one, we had a service call on a waitress reach and bottom section not working. This was a Delfield uh, two door reach in that has a remote condensing unit. It actually has a refrigeration rack, so one single compressor runs multiple reach-ins in the restaurant. Uh, you would call that a multiplex system. Um, when I arrived, what I found was that the evaporator fan motors were running, but there was no cooling coming from the evaporator coil. So I turned the knob on the temperature controller, and I could not feel. And it's a mechanical control, so I could not feel the mechanical action happening on the control. So I. Uh, Pulled the control out, verified the same thing, ohmed it out. It is a bad control. So I replaced it with a new temperature controller. What I did though, because we've been having a lot of problems with these controls lately, with these evaporator coils getting wet and dripping onto the uh, controls, uh, it's been rusting the inside of the controls out. When those units were new, the manufacturer used to ship like a little water guard that used to go over the control. But over the years, as that evaporator has been replaced, they no longer send that with the coil. So we actually uh, had our stainless steel shop fabricate like a little cover that we put on top of the control now that should get them a little more life. Because the control that I replaced today was a little bit over a year old. And you know we should get multiple years out of those controls, not just you know one and some change. So I went ahead and replaced the control, put the coil back together, turned the power on. You could instantly hear the refrigerant flowing through the TXV now. Um, went onto the roof, verified that uh, the sight glass was not flashing. I did not put my service gauges on it. Um, I kind of took a shortcut and let me explain that that's a multiplex system. So that particular box has one, so let's see, two, four, five, six. It has six evaporators that it runs. And my logic, again, I'm taking a shortcut. Always be careful when you're taking shortcuts. But my logic is is that if all other all five other coils are working properly and they're not complaining about uh, temperature issues in any of the other ones then I really don't find the need to put my service gauges on that unit especially since we know it was just a temperature controller that was bad now um, if I wanted to be thorough yes I would go put my service gauges on it check the receiver levels make sure that it has enough refrigerant in it but I didn't see the need and I'm sure the customer appreciates that because it saves them a little bit of money. Now, again, always be careful because if you take that shortcut and you're wrong, that's gonna be a callback. And it's hard to explain to the customer that it wasn't your fault, the system was out of gas, you took a shortcut to try to save them money, it didn't save them money, now they have an extra call coming back, trick, you know, truck charge, all that good stuff. So, you always want to be uh, confident on your shortcuts if you're going to take them and own them because if, if I ended up having to come back, I would probably eat some of my time because I took a shortcut. Um, another thing is this customer service, you know, talking to the manager. This particular customer, it's very interesting because we have multiple people that work for us. And this particular customer, like some other ones in the same, it's kind of funny, in the same area, when I walk in, they're excited to see me. They like me. And in fact, they made the comment right now that, can we just have you come out every time? And 
as much as that makes me feel good because they like me, I'm running a business here and I have other technicians and I need to have the customers be confident in those technicians too. So there's a, there's a lot that goes to, goes into customer service and making your customers happy. They like the way that I explain things. They like the confidence that I exude. Not only do I, do I, you know, have confidence in my work, but I also make them feel comfortable in my explanations and time and time again, they've been satisfied with my repairs because most of the time we don't have a callback and they appreciate that. It takes time to build relationships with customers like that. I suggest you start now if you haven't already and just work on that relationship you build with them because this manager here is not going to be here forever. He's going to go to another restaurant chain and you want him to remember you because when he goes to that other restaurant chain, maybe he'll call you over there and then you can get in with another restaurant chain. My particular business, this is not the way that I suggest everybody doing it, but my business, I don't advertise. I don't go knock on people's doors. Haven't uh, when my dad was doing it. He's not doing it anymore, but even when he was doing it, we haven't gone and banged on people's doors. It's been referrals from people that know us, managers that have left restaurants and gone to new restaurants. That's how we picked up new customers. So it goes a long way to make sure that you have good customer service and that the customers are confident in your work. Other than that, the box came down to temperature. Everything's good to go.